My name is Kate Simmons. I'm the gallery director for the Alexander Gallery. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. I'm really pleased to support Sean Krogan's um, virtual exhibition that is featured by the Alexander Gallery right now. Um, if you have not had a chance to view the show, it's at www.clackamascommunitycollege.art. And um, his exhibition titled In a Solitary Place opened on February 15th and runs through March 19th. I'm very excited to get to introduce you to Sean today. He's a Portland-based artist, um, visual artist, and musician. Uh, in, in this exhibition, he has paintings, collage, and drawings, and um, it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to share his work with our campus community. So thank you so much, and welcome, Sean. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, Kate. Um, I want to thank you, and I want to thank David Anderson um, for inviting me or getting me recognized, and of course, Kelly for helping out with all this stuff, and Clackamas County community college for um, yeah. for having me. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about me and my process. Um, um, like Kate said, I'm a Portland-based artist. I was born and raised here. This has been my home my whole life. And uh, I was raised out in the suburbs in Gresham in the 70s. And then I moved into Portland in the 80s. And during those formative years, I was more into music. Um, I played in lots of punk bands in the 80s and 90s. Uh, I got my kind of recognition in the 90s. And the, during the grunge movement days, I was in a band called Cracker Bash and we got some national attention, a little bit of attention. Um, but I got to rub elbows with lots of other great musicians and also, because I think art and music kind of goes, goes hand in hand. I got to know lots of visual artists as well who were poster makers and painters and sculptors and beyond. Um, so I always loved visual art, but I wasn't really involved with it beyond just kind of doodling and making some rock posters here and there until I was almost 40. And uh, my father got sick and he was dying of cancer and he loved visual art and he was part of the reason why I was always interested in visual art was his passion. And he always wanted to work on visual art, but he was one of those people who got distracted by life. And uh, I decided I didn't want to wind up in the same, the same boat at the end of my life, kind of asking myself, what if I had spent more time painting and drawing and, uh, so I decided that I really wanted to, to devote my time to doing that and uh, to spending at least part of every day in that pursuit. And, uh, you know, I, I started off being really influenced by, by lots of folk artists. And because of when I was born and the time of coming of age, lots of the New York street artists from the eighties, like Basquiat, he was a major influence on young me and when I started getting back into art again I started thinking about his work and other people um outsider artists whether they're like folk artists um or people like Henry Darger who was just kind of way outside and wasn't even recognized until after his death um but interested in that and kind of partially because of my fascination with un with underground music and that the outside as opposed to the more mainstream artists, these people were really the kind of things that made me want to create. And so um, I, I started at that point and being very kind of rudimentary and my color palette was really just a very basic palette. But, um, you know, I've been working on this now for 15, 16 years. So I've definitely moved beyond that. Um, and now, um, just to kind of bring it to where we're at now, um, in the past few years, I've had the opportunity to have a few shows here in town and to get to work on larger pieces and to get to do some bigger projects. Um, but with the pandemic, I found myself kind of stuck back inside of my house again and not getting to work on big canvases and working on more just like drawings and 
smaller pieces that are easy to manage in my apartment since I don't really have a, a studio space outside of my apartment. So I started kind of doing lots of watercolors and lots of portraits of faces because that was one of the things I was missing with was other people's faces and uh, other people's eyes and that kind of connection. Um, like I was saying before the talk, one of the things that always motivated me was my local coffee house. And there's a large group of artists that, that hang out there um, and their influence on me and their energy was one of the things that kind of kept my fires burning for when I would come back to my home studio and work by myself throughout the rest of the day. But not having that, it was definitely more of a challenge to get myself in the habit of the daily practice. Um, that being said, you know, I, throughout the year, um, I had both good days and bad days, but I, I wound up focusing on lots of faces and stuff like because of missing those faces and, um, and this piece of, for example, this is just missing a space in general. I'm, I'm from Oregon, my family's from Oregon. Um, and I like to spend a lot of time out in the high desert um, because of the, its kind of sense of a, eternalness and um, silentness. It's, it's, it's so much different from this side of, of the mountains. Um, but anyway, that's where my dad's ashes are spread out. And so I like to go out there a lot. And this year I didn't get to do that. So I, I spent time doing um, those nature pieces and also because of the fires as well. This year has been so crazy. There's been so many things that have kind of come and gone. You almost forget that these things happen. So these things with these, these burning skies are influenced by those, those days that were smoke filled and uh, uh, that ominous kind of apocalyptic sense um, and also at the same time, these lone figures, these, these figures that are isolated um, in these, these natural um, landscapes, you know, away from others and um, untouched and untouchable. Um, and I do crows a lot too, um, partially because there's lots of crows in my neighborhood and I've always been interested in them they're I mean they're a really intelligent bird and uh, uh, they're super social and they'll interact with you if you if you get them you know to recognize you so um, birds are a constant and also another reason why um, crows and lots of animals are part of my one of the things that I like to do a lot is because of my fascination with place, um, being from Portland and loving mythology, the mythology of this place, which is this, the Chinook people, is a major influence on me. Um, religion and mythology, you know, are, are for me like a, a prime reason why I create art, create art is telling those, you know, the human story, what it is to be a human being. And so I go back to those stories that for, that I love. I'm, I have been inundated with them my whole life being from this place. So that in some ways, those, those Chinook myths speak to me more than maybe like the Occidental mythology that, I bring with my European ancestry. Although I do like to reference those, those you know, myth, myths as well. But um, anyway, so that's why crows and, and raccoons and coyotes um, pop up in my art a fair amount because of those Chinook myths and, and this place, which I, I love so much. Um, another one of the themes that I, thought a lot about was just this year was because I was alone so much. Um, the, the, the yellow building that uh, is in this show, that's one of the only paintings I've ever done that uh, is actually directly comes from a dream. 
and this building popped into my head. Um, and even in the dream, it was like related somehow to Borges, um, the, the writer. And um, I, for a while, I couldn't figure out like why I wanted to paint this image so much of this building, looking out, um, looking out this window towards the sunset. Um, and what I finally decided it was, it was because like all of our realities are, are, are so personal and we each have our own view. We each have our own window that we're looking out of and we can never, even though we might be in that same building with, with everyone else, like our view is, is very personal. And it's almost like each of those windows are like their own cell that, that is our own personal reality. And uh, it, it could be like, either a dark thing or a bright thing. And, and it's very personal. I mean, when I started showing these paintings online, people thought they were happy and people thought it was like, oh, it's a cheese building or it's, 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 a, it's a margarine building. And other people are like, wow, that's like some heavy stuff right there, man. So I think that kind of gets to the point of the painting is like each of these windows, the, your own perspective um, is unique and how, how we choose to view all of this, including the pandemic and, and what we're gonna take out of this experience. Um, and here, once again, here's one of the faces. Um, I love romantic era painting, uh, the eyes from those big giant um, pieces that are super realistic, but also super dramatic have always kind of compelled me but I think it's those the eyes always and the way that they kind of sink into your soul so um I I tend to to repeat a lot of those things where you'll see eyes or people looking at you um uh and also too to a certain degree it's like because I'm self-taught it's always trying to learn stuff I'm trying to teach myself skills and to learn new things and to, to broaden my own ability to to tell my stories because um, I think of myself primarily as a storyteller whether it's like the a rock band or through these pictures there I'm trying to tell a little story and and sometimes it will be overt and sometimes it'll be a little bit more subtle and sometimes I, I want you to understand exactly what's happening and other times I'd you know, I want you to get your own idea. I mean, this one, this piece for me was a giant, giant groundbreaking one um, on a personal level, just because of the, the perspective and how the head wound up being upside down. And I like to leave lots of things to chance. And, and this one just really worked out for, for me. And it, you know, it made me super stoked and it it's funny because I worked on it for a day and then I put it away for like six months and then I drug it out again and uh I worked on it for a few more days and it's like oh I, I guess this isn't a piece of garbage that I should throw away so and, and that happens sometimes I'll work on a piece and I'll be really dissatisfied with it and then I'll come back to it later on and and uh, it'll make me really happy so it's, it's often difficult for me to even know what's going to resonate with other people. This piece really um, got a lot of comments when I first posted it on Instagram. And for me, it was just kind of an, an exercise in, in some of those religious images. And, and I think I did it right around the time of Mother's Day. And I was just thinking about moms and in general and motherhood and what a giant leap of faith that is. Um, I'm not a parent at all. I don't have children. Um, and I think one of the bravest things in the world is to be a parent. Um, and those people that choose that, like, you know, they are taking the ultimate leap of faith, I think. So I was really trying to honor all moms and all parents with this one. Uh, yeah, scrub jays. Uh, here's my buddies. Um, I love them. They are around my neighborhood. They're all over the place. They make racket 
people hate them. I think they're great because they're super smart. Uh, they're super crafty. They're tricksters. And there is a ton, a ton, a ton of Chinook myths about them. And uh, um, Scrub Jay and Scrub Jay's older sister, um, whose name is, and I'm probably going to mess this up because I'm a white guy, um, but it's it away, I believe. Um, and that's his older sister who is a teenager and he's supposed to be her younger brother. And she's always telling him what to do in um, teenage Chinook slang. Um, and he follows her to the letter. And so he always does the wrong thing. Um, Cause you know, slang in any other language is just like slang in our language. Um, it's not literal always. And so he does the thing that, that, uh, that pisses his sister off. And then he gets beaten up usually by his sister and he goes off and like, ah, stupid teenagers. Anyway, I love Scrub Jay. He's a punk. And, uh, and yeah. And um, this, this piece in particular, um, I, I work with a little boy who um, has developmental disabilities and uh, working with him is a great joy. Um, and a great challenge uh, because of those disabilities. And this piece is for him. Um, and kind of just the, the joys that, that I watch him experience in life. And then also the joys I watch this, the, the pros experience in the natural world and the small joys. And this one is pieces about like, I did this in the spring um, or early summer and I was out in my backyard and uh, just kind of finding that that sense of happiness in in an early summer morning and thinking about him and and the way he finds happiness and the way I watch the crows in the neighborhood get by. Um, yeah. So lots of crows in my work. Um, and once again, another scrub jay. Um, I did lots of watercolor pieces this this year. Um, one of my favorite artists is Storm Tharp. Um, he's an Oregonian artist. Um, amazing work. And he does lots of, of watercolor stuff. And he's been a, a major influence on me um, and my, my baby steps towards, towards getting towards his greatness. So um, uh, once again, lots of animal forms. Um, I'm fascinated with that kind of telling human stories through, through beast and their existence. Um, it's part of mythology, you know, it's, it goes back forever and ever telling our, our, our story through nature, you know, and the similarities and the differences. So um, I, um, yeah, I like to do lots of, of, of animals, horses and, uh, yeah, this on the other hand, um, I was really fortunate this year to get to do um, illustrate a book by Jerry Sampson um, that is coming out fairly soon. I think it's coming out next month. Um, and it is through the Buckman Journal Publishing House um, here in Portland, Oregon. Another, I like local stuff. Um, I like, and I like working with, uh, with local people who are doing other art and other art forms. So but yeah, this is, it's called The Scream and Other Dark Stories. And I got to tell you, those stories really scared me. So um, they're, they're good. Um, and it was, so it was really, it was a challenge too, because I'd never done any kind of illustrative work before. So to have to do something that was, that was this literal sometimes and, and directly related to, to someone else's work and, and to try to represent their work and not necessarily just be telling my tale. So this was really cool for me. And um, one of the, the sucky things about COVID um, is the past just disappears just like that, it seems like. So um, whether it's the, the, the fires or the riots were the whatever's happened, it, it seems like it gets three weeks out. <laughs> you start forgetting about it because the day to day of just 
being alone or being locked up or, you know, takes away from that. Um, anyway, uh, so this, yeah, here's another illustration from, from the book. Um, and those were all black and white and mostly ink pieces and some pencil work. Um, it was really fun to kind of get to mix things up and to have things be a little bit messy and a little bit more clean. Does that make sense? Messy and clean. Um, so, but I was thrilled to get to do it. And uh, it, was, it was a good challenge. Um, so that's kind of what it's about, I guess, you know, I mean, since I started this late in life, um, it's all like about like finding that next challenge and seeing if I'm up to the task and, and, and to see what I can learn from that. Um, this piece I did at the end of the year, and this is a reference when I very, very, very first started painting, I did a whole series of anchor paintings that were kind of based on tattoos and they had these these kind of really sad kind of banners that were associated with them, you know, and the, U the boat names that were all like, you know, the USS Disappointment or the USS Solitude. And so I kind of, I was thinking about old work and, and uh, it's good sometimes to, to revisit old ideas to maybe prank up your brain again. Like I said, this, this year sometimes could be a challenge to get myself to work and so, Sometimes if I didn't have any new ideas, I would just kind of go back and like, what were things I used to like to work on? Um, like I used, um, I did a few of these Goya paintings a while ago. And so, I mean, I guess this one is actually from 19. I don't know how this one, I managed to sneak it into the show, but I think it just because I liked it so much. So, um, but sometimes has, some things have to be funny too, you know? I mean, you can't be all serious and or all scary. Um, and you have to laugh and because I think humor is a is a great way to tell stories too about who we are as human beings. So, uh, but the Goya cans, you know, kind of a play on the whole Goya thing. Uh, here again, another black dog um, painting in this kind of lonely, lonely background. Um, there's a bunch of new painters, I think that are adopting old ideas, um, romantic era painting styles and mixing them with surrealism. Um, and that I'm, I'm super inspired by. Um, I mean, this is, you know, to, I started off like really doing lots of stick figure stuff and really, it looked more like drawings than it did like paintings. And so I'm trying to, to keep challenging myself to, to go farther and farther and farther with, uh, with what I you know can learn. Um, a couple of years ago, I was really fortunate. My partner and I were driving through um, Southern Oregon and we saw uh, a wolf on the side of the road. And that has definitely stayed with me ever since then. Um, because once an animal like that looks you in the eye, it doesn't go away. And it was really pretty moving. Um, so I like, I like, um, wolves and black dogs and lycanthropy, um, werewolves, um, monsters, um, these things that, 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 that scare us. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, that it's the things that, that come from inside of ourselves that are in those monsters that are the things that scare, scare us. And that's why I, I like them as a, a, to use them as a theme. So, well, thank you yeah. so much, Sean. Thank you oh, for goodness. talking with us today and sharing your work. And um, everybody, if you haven't had a chance to visit the show, please check it out. Definitely. Um, it runs until March 19th. And thank you again, Sean.